So when the IPC session uh, began discussing the idea of the foundation now several years ago, we, we actually were resurrecting a, an old idea. Um, about 20 to 25 years ago, uh, the session had dis discussed the idea of starting a foundation for the idea, of, for the, the process of, of trying to capture legacy giving that might be utilized for the extension of the kingdom. Uh, and so after exploring it and um, talking to various churches that have similar kinds of church foundations, uh, the session decided to go ahead. Church planting has been a part of the DNA of Independent Presbyterian Church since it began. A six-figure investment, which is what it usually takes to plant a church, is a lot of money, but it can reach an untold number of people for Christ. And those churches need to be pastored and, and, and led by theologically trained uh, pastors. Uh, so theological education is an important part of, of the training for those that are going to be running uh, these, these church plants. And the goal of this part of our fund is to relieve the debt that uh, these pastors can be saddled with once they finish seminary so that they can focus on pastoring uh, the church. And the third effort deals with leadership development, which is a much broader uh, bucket of money that you might be uh, investing in in the fund. Uh, and that deals with both ordained and non-ordained individuals uh, who are needed to run those church plants when they're up, once they're up and running. Uh, you might think of an internship uh, uh, or a mentorship program. That might be one example of, of leadership development uh, that this fund might be used for. Uh, individually, these are all important part of the structure of the growth of the gospel, but collectively and put together, uh, church planting, uh, theological education, and leadership development put together, we think is the most effective and efficient way to spread the gospel for Christ. Uh, about six years ago, I decided to go into full-time ministry uh, in the PCA, and, and part of what that would entail was needing to get a, a Master's of Divinity uh, from one of the, the seminaries that our, our denomination uses. And so um, the IPC Foundation uh, was really a vital part in me being able to go to seminary and also stay here in Memphis and continue to work uh, at first with the middle school and high school students here at Independent and now with college and young adults. Um, as well. And so for myself, it, it really did provide the means for my family to, to do seminary without having to move. Uh, the foundation uh, helped cover costs of books and, and different seminary courses that I've taken over the years. Um, and again, without, uh, without having that, staying in Memphis would have been impossible. And so the foundation, specifically the, the angle that goes about helping and assisting um, individuals that are in seminary, uh, is, is a great ministry and a great way to go about serving and, and helping those that are longing to, to grow both educationally, but also just with experience in ministry um, here in Memphis. The story behind the Kitula Malone Fund is uh, 20 years, really, in the making. Bishop Peter Kitula uh, served the Diocese of Mata Ukedawe in the Africa Inland Church, Tanzania, for 25 years. And I've known him uh, for most of those 25 years. He invited me to come to Tanzania in 2001 to lead a teaching conference for the pastors of his diocese. And during that first visit and through the multiple visits since, there are two things that have become especially clear to me, uh, the need for literal water and the need for spiritual water. We've been fortunate to raise funds to do a number of water well projects in villages, but the more important thing in many respects is the need that there is for training and encouraging pastors to take churches and preach the gospel throughout the diocese. When I first met Peter, there were about 80 churches in the diocese. 25 years later, there are now 185 churches. And there would be more churches if there were more pastors to serve those churches. So the concern in this 
for, or the concern for this fund, or the reason this fund was established, was uh, to serve a pastor's conference that we conduct each year where 400 pastors and wives come together for a week of spiritual nourishment, training, uh, and refreshment, uh, and also to assist the diocese in supporting uh, prospective students, uh, men and women who would like uh, to pursue further biblical and theological education in order to serve the church. Uh, the IPC Foundation really is meant to, to try to provide uh, funding for church planters, um, those who are raising up new churches, both here and abroad, theological education that will equip church planters and those who serve beside them uh, to further God's kingdom in those places, uh, and then leadership development. Um, where are our future elders going to come from? Where are our future ministry leaders, um, uh, women's leaders? Where will they come from? Well, the leadership development was also part of the idea. Um, one of the things that, that causes my heart to hurt is when um, the churches I've served in uh, have gotten large six-figure gifts uh, and only to see those end up in the general fund or in the building fund. Um, I've always wondered if, if we could use those gifts for maximum kingdom impact. And so the IPC Foundation is really for that purpose, uh, an attempt to try to make maximum kingdom impact both here and abroad by especially equipping those who are going to serve Christ's church and extend Christ's kingdom.